Managing Director of Paragon Trust Company and tax and private client practitioner, joins us to bring a common sense approach to money in a world of total insanity. Let's welcome Tony D'Angelo. All right, he's red hot. He's all over Twitter. You can follow him. Don't miss it. All kinds of great stuff rolling through uh, the one and only Tony D. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Lee Elsie. I'm proud to be among everybody. So, uh, you know, in the midst of a crisis, do you take off and go to Israel or go to, I don't know, Italy for you? <laughs> oh, we're going to look at that. I mean, you know, in the continuing amoeba uh, or whatever you want to call it or the morph or the mold that, uh, that's in Connecticut, the, uh, um, I, I, I think it's uh, important here because since this is um, an amoeba, a mold, um, I'd like to follow up some of the things we've discussed in past weeks. Um, I had an interesting development on uh, the original question of what happened to all of the uh, pre-2022 purported PPE purchases of Jack Rubenstein. Um, and, and this would be the $15 million that uh, there's nor hide nor hair from. Um, on uh, Friday, I had a, a very polite email from the Department of Public Health saying, there are no other records to give you, Mr. D'Angelo, regarding these purchases. So for that $15 million, we are in a classic case of hide the ball. Um, this in a department where the former head is uh, the subject or at least parenthetically involved with a federal investigation. And, uh, you know, they ain't talking, so draw your own conclusions. You know, back to the drawing board, but it's kind of typical for life in these here parts. Um, Last week, also in follow-up, we talked about the felony ID theft involving the uh, Boston Consulting Company and the... the, the Boston Consulting Group to be more proper, and uh, I had a call. I said, look, if I had missed this, if if any legislator had received this information and, you know, was acting upon it, wanted to say something, offer a note of sympathy for what had happened, anything whatsoever, uh, you know, please tell me. I'm not perfect. I try very hard to be. Um, and, you know, we stay with the continuing dead air. And a couple other points that just kind of you know, get me aggravated. Um, a very nice young lady friend had pointed out to me in the continuation of the NED orders, um, somehow Section 4 of Executive Order 14A survives. And it pretty much leaves an agency head with all this stuff about the contracting and the construction and Diamantis and uh, all, all this, you know, all, all of these, whatever you want to call them, ham and egg, but very meaningful dollar frauds. Um, any agency head could just go ahead and, uh, you know, if, within their discretion, discretion is probably one of the biggest words in the English language. Just ask anybody in my field, uh, because agents have discretion to do whatever they want to you. Um, they can do whatever they want, and I don't see anybody, like, screaming on the runway or yelling. And I loved, I absolutely loved your monologue about the Afghan issue, because what happened, you know, four months ago, uh, Ned and uh, the Republicans that were there singing, come by, ah, isn't this great? I mean, with the security issues in the state, with the level of competency, we don't know what's in the state. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, back to what you were saying, Lee Elsie, they really don't care about us. You're ball my I heart. agree with that. I don't think they give a damn. I think that they're in it for themselves. I've always thought that, in particular with this administration. It seems like that's the case. And we should be furious. Although, you know, Tony, you look around and some of us are furious. You're furious. I'm furious. Some of the followers that you have are furious. But the majority of people are just, they're just, there's apathy everywhere, right? Otherwise, these guys would be out. Well, you know, and it's the kind of thing that people that you would expect to at least acknowledge or put up a better fight for you, and I'm going to use the words, uh, and not everybody, but I'm going to use the words Republican Party. It's like, you know, gaga. You know, you have Republicans praising Ned Lamont. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, <laughs> I know I, I, I'm getting back into this old World War II history, watching these Mike Wallace biographies. I watched in the kid. I never saw Churchill praise Hirohito. I, I don't get it. I <laughs> yeah, don't get it. I, I think you're 100 percent on to something right there. And, and I do know this. Here's what I do know. There, there will be. And, and I get this part of it from some of the legislators where they're they'll, sh- they'll you know shrug their shoulders a little bit and say, well, there's really nothing that we can do to prevent some of this stuff. And my response to some of that stuff is, yeah, there is. You can just go on the Capitol steps and 
either call a press conference or start talking about it and start you know, just yeah, yeah just make something. a lot of noise pound your fist on a desk you know get a camera because we're you know we're living in the world of an age of technology let everybody know that you're not happy with this stuff you're not happy that we're coddling criminals you're not happy that fentanyl is on our street corners you're not happy that you know the governor is getting away with no bid contracts let us know and then if enough of you up in hartford do that you've got something well, people will start paying attention because the line is not bright enough. I mean, where I freaked out about, uh, I, I, I chat um, almost daily with a group of wonderful, good, devout Republican people. And uh, there was a press conference, I believe it was in Danbury, where the governor and the mayor was kind of a kumbaya thing and involved Western Connecticut State and, and, and. And, and I said, guys, I don't want you to answer this for me. Uh, but uh, I'm troubled seeing this. What is that man, mayor, doing with that man, governor, now? You know, I mean, not only does this send the wrong message in, in the, the light of your average voter, it's like, hey, great, you know, Ned Lamont's doing a good job for the state. I mean, it's like, you know, and, and, and it's the kind of thing that, you know, there is a time for participation. There is a time for bipartisanship. But right now we're dealing with a sinking ship. You know, and it's sinking on so many levels. And people think, you know, and this is the thing, the mindset. <clears throat> and I didn't necessarily wanted to go here, but I'm glad I am. Uh, the mindset is such that, you know, well, we can do what we did in 2004 and everything will be right again. I just picked a year out of the air. And it's, it, it is an entirely different world and they just don't see it. Yeah, Tony D is with us. He's with us each and every Tuesday. We chat about... Pretty much whatever's on Tony's mind <laughs> that day, which is good because <laughs> yeah, a lot today, uh, it's sorry. a lot. It's always a lot. Uh, and by the way, just a side note, if you have uh, questions or comments or concerns and you want to throw them at Tony, feel free either to contact Tony directly or send them to me. And Tony, if you want to, you know, you know to get it back and forth with some of the listeners, how would they contact sure. you? Sure. Um, the, the Twitter's great at Tony D'Angelo seven. If we need to go to email, you know, we could chat there and then we could take it onto email. That's fine. All right. What's next? Hey, I, I always appreciate it. But I guess this comes down to this whole thing of, you know, with all the things that are happening, Lee Elsie, you know, it's like the, the, the big kahuna, Ned Lamont continues to skate and there's not enough pressure on him. And, and I don't get it. Look at what happened as we started this conversation. You know, you've got all these issues with, uh, you know, all, all the frauds, all the thing. They've got Josh Cabal. They've wished, wished him off. Um, as, as the investigations mount, the two functional people in this investigation are nowhere to be found. And where is Ned? What do you do? Well, you follow the racketeer's playbook. You go on the lam. You know, you get out of the area. You know, you, uh, you lie low until the heat is off. So he goes to Israel. That's his real name, Ned Lamont, L-A-M, on the lamp. But, um, you know, like, like any other good racketeer, this is what you do. So you go on a trip to Israel. Look at the connective tissue here, which absolutely freaks me out to no end, but nobody's saying a word other than, you know, on, on this particular program. He's on a plane. He's going with members of the Digital Currency Group, the University of Connecticut, the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development and Connecticut Innovations. So this is all on the state nickel. And we've been down these organizations on this show and as to what they've been doing. He is also, it's a fintech uh, trip. He's there with these people. Look at these players just by way of review. The Connecticut DECD, $200 million in 10 years. Money just gets thrown all over the place. They threw money to the digital currency group, of which the Lamont family is, you know, was, is, currently is invested in. That was the whole thing on November 29th. Um, my belief is you've got to abolish this organization or go in with a, with, with, a, with a blowtorch and do something and just hand out money. And, you know, the, the answer to the continuing failures is you just throw out more money. Uh, Connecticut Innovations, $589 million over 10 years. You know, uh, they're also one of the founding investors in Semaphore. Um, the Digital Currency Group, this is all going to Israel, folks. You know, the, the Lamont, um, the, the prior and current investments, $400 million, uh, $55 million pledged from the Department of Economic and Community Development. I mean, Ned and the Digital Currency guy are on this plane at taxpayer money. Nobody's saying a word. It's like... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, I've got to live in bizarre world. This yeah. is absolutely unbelievable. And then we've got the lovely University of Connecticut. Let's look at them, right? They've got the little tech incubator. We'll get to that at another point. That'll be a whole lot of fun. Um, lost its tax exemption 10 years ago. A $50 million investment in the Cayman Island funds. How'd that get there? Who even knew what the Cayman Islands were in the state before Ned Lamont? Um, and a foundation of 42% in private equity. We have no idea how many, you know, how many Ned investments are in there. And I mean, I actually have heard candidates, I've actually heard members of the Republican Party say, well, I think this is good. I think this could be a good thing. Are you out of your freaking mind? I mean, you know, like, it's like the Afghan thing. This is the whole idea in the state. And where I really fell off the chair, let me just say this. The Lamont family has, uh, through Oak HCFT, six corporate investments that I've counted in, is, in Israel. Pagaya, Cryon, Nanagu, Authentics, Rapid, and Panaris. I mean, it's like, is there any accounting for, is this guy trading here privately on the state nickel? I mean, if I am a private businessman, which I am, and I go to Los Angeles, California, and I want to stop and see, you know, the Rams game or something like that, and, uh, you know, or I want to, not that you really want to do much over there these days, and I have a trip which is business and pleasure, I have to carefully account for my days and carefully account for my time, but here is this guy playing on the state nickel with bazillions of dollars, and nobody says a word. And it's just, I, I, I just don't get it. It's absolutely amazing. But one thing that really knocked me off my chair, there was a press conference this week um, where the Republicans had come out and said, you know, there's time we had a bipartisan investigation of all this. Personally, I think you need a blowtorch. But a, a representative, uh, Tammy Zawatowski, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, made a statement which knocked me off my chair. She said, it's time that we require quasi-public agencies to abide by the same transparency and ethics as state agencies. Her words, not mine. Okay, are you going to go after the Yukon Foundation? That's what I want to know. You know, if it's just going to be these, you know, construction things here and there, hey, that's cool. That's low-hanging fruit. But what about where all this other kind of advice and consent goes on? I am so tired of it, Lee Elsie. You know, you talk about what's necessary here. This is what's necessary. I thought they already made that declaration that the quasi-publics were going to be held to the same standards as everybody else after the whole port deal. If you remember, there was a that whole port thing blew up with the improprieties where people were, if you remember, if somebody was buying, somebody will tell me out there, but paintings, somebody's daughter's paintings were going for 50 times the, their worth because she was the daughter of somebody who was on one of the boards. Of somebody, yeah. yeah. so I I thought that they had already gone through that, but maybe not. Maybe that that's sort of still in, well, in limbo. Well, it, it hasn't reached to me the most critical levels. There was a bill somebody had proposed when, when UConn lost its exemption and started with the foundation. You can look it up. If somebody's curious, I can probably get my hands on it. 2014, 2015, you know, this, we've really got to make this thing transparent for all. Uh, somebody had proposed it. It just died in committee. I mean, it's, it's like they want this there to continue to run the way it is. I mean, I don't think when they make these statements, when they come out in these pronouncements, when they show this great show of force, I don't think they get the depth, the breadth, and the height. Forensic audit, that's great. Personally, I think you need Elliot Ness. <laughs> I mean, because it's like, you know, if you're not asking these fundamental questions, what is this guy doing there? What is his itinerary? You know, it's like, I mean, and you want me to donate to you, and you want me to vote for you. I mean, you got to show more than this, man. You're blowing it. Tony D'Angelo, our guest on Tuesdays. Let's not run out of time. I know you want to flip to talk about uh, parental rights and education, right? Yeah, I, I just want to encourage the, the parents this morning. You know, somebody had come to me um, over this week, and, and they think I'm an expert on everything, which I am not an expert <laughs> on anything except maybe a couple of things I know something about. And um, the fact of, uh, which I thought was an interesting question, uh, can a minor be vaccinated against their will and this whole thing of, you know, which I see these dear parents, parents fighting with these state numbskulls about who has the parental rights. And there is a long premise going way back to biblical times and going forward that rights always vest in the parents. Parents, please don't forget that, because I just mentioned off the top of my head, you know, this reminds me of the Jackie Coogan case. What do you mean, Jackie Coogan? You know, Uncle Phil's parents ripped him off the 1910, 1920, and his parents ripped him off the 1910.
10, 19, 20. And his parents ripped him off, like to, to no, like, like incredible proportion. And when he was a young man, he was out of pictures and not really getting much business. He went to court and um, the court said, you know, well, we've got to start making provisions for minors, but there's a fundamental thing there. And they said, let's make no mistake. Children, and this was their language, because Paul Peterson, who was a friend, who was a child actor years ago, would tell me, uh, children, this is the court's decision, are the property of their parents. <laughs> and you, you see this, I was reading this, you see this kind of falling through. And, I mean, this is where you have bad parents, and there's very little you can do about it. So parents, don't forget, your children are yours. They don't belong to a state, especially a state that runs this way. Better's coming. It's, it's really up to people to say they've had enough and, you know, really, I feel like Howard Beale, not going to take it anymore. And what has to happen in order for, because I know there's a way you can annex your parents if you're uh, a certain, like, don't, you, don't you get the opportunity if you're a certain age to actually go to court and try to divorce yourself from your parents if they're, if they feel like you're, if, they're, if you feel like they're treating you poorly, isn't there? What's the term for that? Yeah, and that's that's really like you know I can't really speak expertly yeah. about that. I mean, that's the whole thing of mature minors and things like that. But I mean, the, the fundamental thing is uh, a state agency cannot just come in and say, well, we know what's best for you. You have, it's like everything else, you know, it's like, you know, take your identity. It's like, what, it, it doesn't really matter. We know what's best for you. And, yeah. and that's the thing. I think if you're looking for a bright line in this whole thing, if you're looking for a difference between right and wrong, something to campaign about, start there. You know, it's interesting that you just brought up a point, like you sort of looked at the other side of it, but what if you had a really bright, articulate 14 year old, and their parents were insistent on getting them vaccinated and the kid didn't want to. What happens then? I, 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 I think it goes right to the rights of the parents because it's the thing of, you know, um, there, there's good and bad in everything. We say in trust in the states, good and bad wills, good and bad trust. Yeah. They get admitted. They get was, But the fact that they're bad does not underlie the fact that, you know, the authority of the law supports them. You just got to play what's there. Right. That that's always been my view. All right, Tony. One more time, your Twitter feed, so they can follow. Tony D'Angelo Seven.